So I'm an undergraduate student at the University of Queensland, Australia. Uh, I'm basically studying a Bachelor of Arts, majoring in philosophy and minoring in history and English. And yeah, I also work as a security guard, uh, mostly night shifts. And yeah, I've also been an activist with Extinction Rebellion, done some stuff like that. Well, I never really liked school, but the first thing I came across in terms of like uh, academic theory was in a bookshop when I was still quite young, I found Deschooling Society by Ivan Illich. And I really liked that book and it sort of helped me kind of, it kind of just opened my eyes a little bit and it gave me a really useful sort of academic kind of theoretical uh, framework with which to actually understand why I sort of had a problem with the kind of uh, education that I received and why I never really liked it and why I always kind of felt not really, why I always felt like I loved learning, but why I never feel really felt like I connected with the schooling experience. So that was useful. Uh, but it was kind of a background interest for me. I wanted to be a teacher for a while and I kind of gravitated towards philosophy. But I ended up kind of looking into looking into a lot of ideas around uh, Indigenous, uh, here in Australia, Indigenous education or different uh, decolonial uh, models of education, that sort of stuff. And I've also been looking into as part of my interest in philosophy. I was really interested in the work of Bio Kamalafe. Yeah, I'd say for me, it's kind of difficult because I'm in higher education in the university, but I don't really kind of connect with it. It's just sort of something. I like exploring ideas in philosophy and I like all of that stuff, but I don't really like uh, higher education or how it works or any of that stuff. So for me, I don't really have, say, much of a direction for my future even necessarily. Like I, I work security basically. And that's good because I can, I can do a lot of academic work while I'm getting paid to do security work. So that's good. But I can't really think of where my academic work is going to lead me because I don't necessarily, I wouldn't really be happy even if I was to succeed in an academic setting and become a lecturer or something or do some kind of research. I would still feel like I wasn't really making a positive contribution to anything. And I would still feel like we have all of these problems that I wouldn't be able to try to fix or help <clears throat> help contribute to, help contribute towards I don't know thinking a better way of doing all the stuff because as soon as I were to get a job in say as a lecturer I'd be overburdened with my course load and whatever and all of this dumb stuff I'd basically just be a sort of administrator and I could kind of make things a little bit better and tweak them here and there but I'd very rapidly get sucked into a, a horrible cycle where that's that's all I'm focused on. And uh, yeah, so I guess it's difficult for me because I'm trying to figure out where I fit into all of this uh, stuff as well. I'm just trying to kind of understand because I know there are a lot of ideas out there like that's why I came to the conference. So, and it's good to hear all of those ideas because it makes me feel, oh yeah, like uh, those ideas are out there. But at the same time, yeah, uh, I don't know where I'm going to go myself. Mm. <clears throat> uh, I guess my initial idea, well, I thought about when I, about a year ago anyway, I wrote kind of an essay on, uh, on university it was on uh it was on education but i framed it in kind of an interesting way in that well um it was framed around uh ecology and the climate crisis and basically all of this different stuff and my idea was essentially that if you wanted say uh a change in a sort of paradigmatic change in the outlook of people in society, it made the most sense to focus on the youth. So I thought uh, if we, you implemented some kind of entirely different means of education on, uh, on a national scale, but really localized, like if, they, if a government were to fund a series of different kind of local initiatives 
um, <clears throat> that weren't sort of uniform, but they all got funding from the federal government and the federal government was encouraging it. And you had sort of different roadmaps for different local areas and communities. You could come up with a kind of, uh, you could come up with a kind of different uh, education system that was based towards, I mean, like less around, less around just a, a basically a version of holistic education or something more like if you wanted a, a Anglo, ang Anglophone equivalent, something like Bildung or something like that, but not, but less European. So my idea was to sort of blend Bildung with something, blend something like a Bildung with uh, Indigenous educations and initiatives and something like that and have it be very localized and Australian and have the uh, the federal government actually support and fund that in a, bunch, in a series of different local areas, but it was all very theoretical because I'm just uh, I'm just an undergraduate essentially. So I know about a lot of different initiatives that are kind of similar, but they're not really based around exactly uh, what I was thinking. Because here, because of the situation, the the uh, colonial context. Um, for a lot of first peoples, the emphasis is really on self-determination for their themselves in their own communities and groups. So there are a lot of indigenous uh, groups, uh, nonprofits or corporations that uh, go to indigenous communities and then uh, educate those communities on different ways they can implement this sort of indigenous education systems or design their own education systems. So in the, uh, an Anglophone sense, it's what you might call demo democratic. Uh, but, the, but yeah, in any sense, those kinds of things exist, but uh, I really wanted to find some way to blend that with, uh, to blend that with the conventional education system uh, in terms of, it's good that those communities get self-determination, but at the same time, it also leaves the majority of the the nation kind of captured in this colonial uh, education system, which is just training people up to um, get jobs in these, get jobs in the current paradigm and continue destroying uh, the planet, continue, continue uh, the exploitation of, of, um, of resources and the destruction of, uh, destruction of our country, basically. So, I wanted to find a way to uh, overhaul that education system. But the more I looked at it, I had the essay and I, I liked it theoretically, but it seemed more like, yeah, you could blend all of these different ideas, but it would require a very different, it just went back to a political thing of like, well, nobody's gonna fund that because it already would mean that the federal government would need to have a very different outlook. And I just don't see the, having a kind of outlook like that. So the more I looked at it, the more I thought there are already these grassroots initiatives going on. Uh, and it kind of makes more sense to look at those and nurture those in themselves because, I don't know. I, I, I'm worried I'm just gonna end up rambling about sort of the stuff that I've been looking at. I'm not sure it's gonna be particularly, particularly productive or anything like that. Uh, yeah, that's just me with this stuff, it's more like it's for my own edification in that I had the theoretical ideas and the more I looked into trying to write the essay, the more I realized, eh, it makes sense conceptually, but the best way practically for any of that stuff to happen would be through these grassroots initiatives that already exist. The problem is that's very slow and if, yeah, you're trying to change people's outlook so that so that they can uh, kind of shift away from this destructive paradigm. The destruction will probably have already, things will probably already be quite dire by the time anything sort of comes of it. So the best you could kind of hope for is some very enlightened or well-equipped, people who are well-equipped, like emotionally, psychologically, uh, and educationally, for a very unstable, uncertain kind of time, I suppose. But yeah, I think that's going to mostly come through grassroots initiatives because even if you have somebody uh, 
who can conceptually lay all of that stuff out in sort of a top-down kind of map. Politically, there's no way to get the support or anything like that. And yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Uh, what have I unlearned? I suppose I unlearned, probably goes back to the essay where let's say I unlearned a bit of my, um, my, what would you call it? My controllingness, I suppose you'd say, or my ability to kind of try and control things. So like part of the essay was, I can see like a lot of good things in all of these movements and, and I can see a lot of, I can envision uh, a much better kind of way to educate the next generation of, of people in this, in this uh, country or on this land. And it's kind of like, yeah, I can see that. And I really became kind of a little bit obsessed with like getting those ideas down in a way that makes sense. So you can almost create this map so that people can use it. And you kind of, um, I kind of, yeah, thought like, felt like I could, I suppose, isolate what was best and come up with a really clear roadmap and present it in a way that was almost like I needed to control the situation or I needed to put all of these initiatives kind of in a singular direction. And I kind of, I feel that the conference kind of helped me realize that um, it's made me, yeah, it made me probably realize that the best way for these things to develop is um, these movements kind of learning and iterating and going on their own and eventually probably coming together and realizing what they have in common in a more organic way, rather than having somebody who's an outsider identify all of the similarities from afar and have a little bit of interaction and then try to plot all of these pieces together. To me, it kind of made sense to just kind of sit back a little bit more, take a few steps back, stop sort of pushing myself to try to keep iterating these ideas and more just kind of accept that there are a lot of good movements and a lot of good people doing a lot of good things. And I don't necessarily need to try to control the outcome by piecing all of the different uh, organizations and groups together in a way that makes sense so we can create scale, uh, we can create change on a large national scale. So, yeah, I mean, maybe that's the wrong conclusion, but I'd say that's something I unlearned. I just became a little bit less controlling and a little bit more, yeah, wanting to support, go out and connect more with what's already there and spend more time doing that rather than prioritizing my uh, energy and my time working on this more abstract theoretical stuff. It makes more sense to me anyway. <laughs>